Hi, this is Zap, and welcome to the Reset and Zap Podcast. I just need a reset. No, it's not enough to press pause. I think I need a reset. I need a reset. 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 Welcome to the Reset and Zap podcast. I am your host, Zap, and with me is my excellent partner, my co-host. Hey, everybody. What's up? It's your boy, TJ. And in season two, as always, we're bringing you the best of the best with a little bit of nostalgia from season one. Mm, Let's do it. Let's cook it up. Yeah, because you know what we're going to start off with? What? We're going to start off with our rewind. 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 Yeah, guys. So just a little taste of what to expect from this episode. We're going to talk in our rewind segment about a topic that we had covered in our previous uh, season one. Uh That is what it's like to be a content creator. What it's what is it? uh, What is like being a content creator? Right. And then moving on, we're going to go to our reset segment where we're going to talk about this now being accepted as a professional career yeah. or as a business overall. So if you're interested in pursuing a career such as an influencer, whatever it may be, an online public figure, then this episode is for you. Oh, yeah. Let's kick it off then. First of all, let me just say that our dream did come true because we did say we were going to do a two-parter to this episode. Yeah, we did. We actually did, didn't we? <laughs> yes. I didn't even think about that till you said it. So we're back at it again because uh, it was too good. It was too good of a topic to just leave it on a shelf. Okay, part two. So we're rewinding it. We're going back, taking it back, baby. All right, hit that rewind. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so bad. <laughs> but <laughs> I have no idea what that was. But okay. Yeah, that's a that's the you know that's that eighties yeah, internet. That 80s, yeah. That's that AOL right there. Huh? Um, you well, got mail. I bet it sounded way better though than mine. But yeah, what what it's like being a content creator? Can we recap a little bit of like what we discussed in season one? Yeah. Well, uh, we started by just talking about you know the ups and downs. Of being a content creator how you know it's not all sunshines and rainbows uh we talked about the challenges that come with it and uh we just we kind of just broke it down into all different kind of aspects of you know your personal life and how to separate your personal life from your content creation life we talked about personas uh we talked about so many good things and um i guess we could just jump it off by you know expanding upon those just a little bit more like one of the things that i wanted to bring up is uh going back to the topic of personas again Mm -hmm. and how you have to craft your persona in order to you know give your audience that energy and that that what you want your channel to be about and and in you know recent events and you know things that have been going on we're not going to go into details or anything yeah, like yeah, that yeah, yeah. but we're finding out more and more that people's personas are becoming polar opposites to what they actually are oh. and i think that's something i would like to talk about because when we talked about personas before we were talking to them about them being an enhancement of who you actually are oh yeah you know how we talked about that yeah and i think some people are getting it twisted where they think personas are completely different than what the person is and i think that's where a lot of people are making that mistake and for me tj the gamer is just an enhanced version of of tj so it's like i'm just more of what i am i'm more in your face i'm more energetic but i'm not that different from tj the gamer it's just a more exaggerated version of yeah. what that is the amplified yeah amplified version of who i am mm-hmm. just to give that you know that extra oomph to the a video or to a song i'm working on or whatever the case may be but some people are actually using their personas to mask who they are and just be completely different than who they actually are and that's where we run into some of these problems we run into where people have these 
feelings about content creators like being fake or not being real or that may case may be and i think that is not 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 the way that we should be viewed <laughs> i don't know why it it reminds me of like are we almost taking it back to like the high school playground where you know some people just had to go through peer pressure and just wanted to fit in a group <laughs> So they'll they'll do whatever it takes to mm. feel like oh I can be a part of this group see I I I match that vibe I match that energy so I can I can be this type of person mm. is that where we're going with it nowadays mm. I I wasn't thinking about it that way but mm, you're kind of eating right now yeah that yeah I think that's what it is is that people try want to be a part of something so bad that they're willing to pretend to be something that they're not. In order to just be a part of something, which is, I mean, quite frankly, kind of sad. Yeah. But it is a reality of the world we live in now where people feel so disconnected from the world at this point, where like people will pretty much do anything for a little bit of attention or to feel like they're part of a crowd. And at the end of the day, that's not really a healthy way to go about it. Mm -hmm. Because like at the end of the day, people are going to know whether you're real or not. Oh, yeah. Like, I've seen... 100%. I've seen people who, like, step into certain fields or step into a certain space and really don't know anything about it and they're really not interested in that, but they just, they love the community itself and they just want to be a part of that community. So they pretend to be more knowledgeable than what they are. And I'm just like, well, like, in my case in particular, like, let's talk about me specifically. Yeah, yeah. Like, when I first came into the content creation slash gaming space, I didn't really know much about it. I knew much about my experiences and what I've known, but I've never tried to present myself as somebody who knows everything about gaming or somebody who knows everything about music production. And People have actually seen my growth from the beginning. Like, if you go back to my first projects and listen to my projects now, you'll see that the quality has increased and my audio has increased and my, my actual skill level has increased and my gaming knowledge has increased and I'm st starting to understand more, being able to make more obscure references. And like, so I've never tried to present myself as somebody who knew everything, who gets everything. I think it's better to have your audience grow with you as a content creator, like to see you from your beginning to where you're going. And I think that's why I've created the fan base that I have because people see like, look, look how far he's come and I've seen him, I've grown with him on his journey and I, I know where he's come from and to see where he is now. And people tell me this all the time, like, man, you, you've improved so much and man, you've, you've done this and you've done that and you've touched me. And I think that's a better way to go about it than to try to come into the scene like, I know everything and I know what I'm doing. And yeah. I'm, this and I'm that and then when you get called out on it and you don't really know then people have that mistrust of you and I, I have the trust of my fans because they know where I came from they know like oh no TJ no you can't you can't say that about TJ because I know like he's he's been doing this for years at this point you know what I'm saying like so I think that's a misconception that people make that you can just create a persona just to fit in and make yourself be something that you're not when there's no genuine feelings behind it. Like, yes, I do have a persona, but my persona is pretty genuine to who I am and to who my audience expects me to be. Mm -hmm. And I think this is correlated to a lot of phrases that people just throw out there that don't necessarily make sense when you think about it, uh, you know, under deeper terms. Like, for example, you know, I've, I've know, I know a lot of you have heard this phrase of fake it till you make it. And that's been like misconstrued in so many ways because fake it till you make it, from my understanding, is more so like put those systems in place, like be consistent, be diligent, be disciplined, and 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 believe in yourself that you're going to achieve these goals. But some people fake it till you make it for them is what you say, you know, they build a persona, they try to jump into a space, uh, trying to step in as an authority or letting people think that they you know have this vast amount of knowledge in this space when they really don't and then within time that 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 shows because 
you know, it's, it's different like for you where you, you've been self-taught. So people have been able to see that growth and that evolution, you know, in your journey as, a, as you know, in your musical career and, and in content creation as well. But, you know, a lot of these people, I feel like they're already con- trying to compare this, themselves a lot of the times to someone who's been doing it for a while. And so they want to be on par to this person. But if you're just starting, that's that's not going to be the reality of it. Yeah. And it's funny that you brought up fake it till you make it, because what a lot of people don't realize is that term actually comes from the music industry. That's actually a music industry term that people used to say and the people have kind of misconstrued the meaning of it Mm -hmm. uh fake it till you make it was a term that came up in the music industry that actually meant like when you're on stage and you're performing and you're not necessarily in the best mood or you're not feeling your best or you're not at a hundred percent you you know you kind of you gotta kind of perk yourself up you fake it until you make it to the end of the show like it's, it's it was a basically a show term for like even when you're not at your best or even if you know there's only 10 people in the audience or even if you're sick or even if you're tired even if you're not in a good mood that you have to be able to push yourself to still perform at your optimal level i.e faking it yeah until you make it kind of like how the theater uses which is not necessarily the same meaning but like how they have their own slangs they're like oh break a leg you know like good luck out there or something like that yeah so i think a lot of people misconstrued that it basically means and it it actually kind of does connect to what personas do too is what the it's not really necessarily faking it it's more so about even when you're not in the best mood or in the best zone or in the best place you still put forth your best effort regardless yeah so it's like even that's what your persona is about so even though tj may be tired or may not be in the best mood when it comes to giving his audience entertainment or music he's always going to give his best regardless of how he's feeling Mm -hmm. and that is the faking it part of it is that yes inside you may not know that i'm tired i don't feel good or i'm sick but you're going to get that full energy tj that you see on camera Because that's what they subscribe to. Yeah, because that's what they expect you to be. Yeah. So it's like, even though I may be tired or you may be tired or we don't feel our best or whatever the case may be, we still give forth that best performance. And that's what the true meaning of faking it till you make it really is supposed Mm -hmm. to be. Yeah, and if you do it the correct way, they're, they're, you know, the healthiest way, uh, it does bring, like, positive results because people look up to you and you inspire so many people in so many ways that you, you might be the reason of of a person having their day completely, you know, turned from hell to heaven, you know, or you uplifted that person and gave them a motivation to continue in life even when they felt like they hit a wall, you know, so, so I love that you broke that down because in the previous episode, you're absolutely correct. Like we explained like the definition of what we understand content creation persona is, but you know, there is the the positive side and then there's the uh, negative side, which just goes way beyond just content creation. I think as a whole, we're seeing a vast majority of people on social media and in the on- online world where it's unfortunate to say, but they pretty much have masked themselves to try to fit within the space, to try to fit within the community, to try to gain the attention or the um, acknowledgement of, a, of even a singular person out there. Like, I've, I've seen this on and on again, you know, where the, the, I, this person, before they stepped into this world, they were nothing like the person now they're portraying themselves to be. And you, you wonder at times, I'm like, where did this come from? Because it could be as simple as seeking self self uh, validation. I think that's where a lot of it comes from is people seeking validation. Yeah. And what but I think a lot of people misunderstand or just don't get is that the only person that can validate you is yourself. Yeah. Because the whole world can be behind you and supporting you, but if you don't feel good about yourself, it does none of that is really going to matter to you. Because we've, I, I, I hate to bring it up, and you know, there's been plenty of stories of these big, big content creators who have millions of subscribers, and 
you know, they're basically doing YouTube full time for a living and everybody thinks that their life is just perfect and great and and unfortunate things happen. They do they commit suicide or they quit or they have mental breakdowns or they, or have they made wrong big, decisions. They have bad health. You know what I'm saying? Like you never yeah. know what's really going on behind the scenes. And you think just because everything looks shiny on the outside that everything on the inside is great. Just because you have a million subscribers don't mean you're happy with yourself. Oh yeah, absolutely. I've seen people and I've heard people on, you know, on, on the good old Twitter, because I'll still keep calling it Twitter. Um you know, people will be like, I don't understand, you know, why this person got monetized and then on the next day they quit. And I don't understand if, you know, they got these X amount of subscribers and they quit. There's reasons why, you know, if it, if the, the, for you, that monetization might mean a priority, might mean the goal, the end goal. For that person, it might not mean anything. It just means an extra feature that YouTube offered them but it doesn't really translate in success to them. So success can mean a total different thing to every person. It just depends how you look I'm at it. I'm glad you said that because that's actually, I think the biggest thing about being a content creator is about deciding what success means to you. Oh yeah. You know who's a perfect person I look up to that I love that he breaks down the definition of success so much. Um, his name is, um, Gary, I think it's Gary V or, or, um, correct me in the comments guys, but he is a, he is a, he's a mentor and he's been really successful online and he's broken down the definition of success. And, you know, and he's, he said, you know, success is whatever it means to you. And he says that a lot of times we look at success with the wrong lens. So, you know, the, the sad reality of it in the content creator economy that we live in, you know, content creators define success by metrics. They define it by analytics. They define it by vanity numbers. Monetary and gains. Monetary gains or how big your following is, your, 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 your tribe. And after a while you're going to be burned out because if you start looking at your numbers every day which fluctuates so much every you know day. every day people will come in and walk out like it's nothing you know you're going to be disappointed because if you define your success based on those numbers when those numbers start dipping you're going to feel like a failure as a content creator because you're not going to understand well i've done all this why am i not doing well i'm supposed to be here in six months actually I'm, i should have hit this amount of you know subscribers and this uh, this milestone sooner but i didn't so i must not be great and no it doesn't necessarily mean that you know and what makes it even worse is when people compare themselves to others oh yes you know you'll see this oh i just hit a thousand subscribers or i just hit five thousand subscribers and you're wondering why you're not there but that's not what's important to you. You know what I'm saying? Like everybody has their time, everybody has their moment, everybody has their successes. And all you can do is focus on yours and strive towards the goals that you want to reach and not try to compare yourself to everybody else that's out there. Because once again, like you said, those numbers don't necessarily mean anything. Mm -hmm. Like there's plenty of people who have a lot of subscribers but maybe don't have the views or people who have the views but don't have the subscribers or whatever the case may be like you you're just looking at the surface of what's going on you don't know what that person had to do to get those numbers how hard that person has been working that person could be working very very hard they could be posting videos every day doing shorts every day making videos every you don't know what some people do to get to those levels and if you're not willing to put in that same amount of work then you can't really compare yourself with somebody who's doing that mm -hmm. like i can't compare myself to people who do videos seven days a week no there's people out there that do it yeah there's people out there who push out content every single every day. day i can't do that and yeah. or quite frankly i don't want to do that oh no <laughs> so i can't compare myself to people who are putting in that kind of work because that's for some people that's what it takes you know and your growth may be slower because, you know, you put out maybe one or, two, one or two videos a week or one or two videos a month or whatever the case may be. So your growth may take a little more time. So, like, when you're looking at these surface numbers, you're not looking at what goes behind it or what the reality of what these numbers actually mean. Mm -hmm. You're just looking at a number. 
and that doesn't really equate to anything. Yeah, I think one of the biggest mistakes I've seen people do, and I, I'm, unfortunately I see it a lot even in the gaming space, um, you see, a, a, you know, the majority of folks that look up to a content creator, they see how successful that content creator is, but they see it from the outside. They're not really in that world yet. And, and in their mind, they already made, a, you know, a, a set of expectations of, oh, this should be easy because this person, you know, is doing so well in this niche or it's going super well. I love this community and I love, you know, gaming. So all of, all of a sudden I'm going to just become this, you know, content creator. And then once they step into this world and they realize, yo, this is a lot more work than it seemed from the outside. And it's even worse now because now the market is flooded. It's saturated. You have to stand out. So how are you going to even stand out? Yeah. Uh, you know, if you if you, and it's it's so complex that then you start seeing people just slacking. You'll be like, oh, I don't feel good. Oh, I'm sorry. I gotta postpone this stream. Or I'm sorry, I couldn't upload a video, but I promise I'll upload a video next week. And and then six months later, cuckoo, this person off the platform, completely disappeared. You don't even know where this person is anymore because they probably didn't realize how much commitment and work it, it you have to put behind making this thing even successful and not and let's, let's not even talk about successful, just to even get this thing to take off. Yeah, just to, just to get a starting point. Like for my channel, like I've been, what, I think we're like at two and a half years now with my channel. And like, there's been big growth spurts where I might get 50, 60 subscribers in a day. And there's been months where I've gone without my number changing at all. Mm -hmm. Like you, there's these ebbs and flows and it doesn't matter how hard you work or how much you do, it just, it won't change until you sit at a certain point and then you'll get another big jump or you might get a little here and there or you never know how it's gonna happen for you. So you can't, just sit around judging yourself based on what's happening this month or what's happening this day or because it can change wildly just mm -hmm. depending on you know the season what kind of content is hot right now what the algorithm is pushing what you know does your view does your video meet certain standards are, are you putting out a certain kind of quality is your audio great uh, are you talking about things that people are interested in like, are you interesting talking about the things that people want to hear about? Mm -hmm. Like, there's so many things you have to consider and develop and grow before you even get to a point where people are even interested to even check it out. Yeah. So it's like, you can't, you can't expect everything to just shoot up immediately. There's some people who come into the game and they just, they got that and they, cause they come in but you don't know what their prior skill sets were. Exactly. You don't know what they did. Some of these people were filmmakers before. Oof, I'm glad you're bringing this Some up. of these people already had all, you know, thousands of dollars worth of equipment and they, they was able to invest a lot of money into it. Some of these people came in with, you know, all prior knowledge from other people that's done YouTube. Like, oh, my mm -hmm. friends are big content creators and they kind of helped me get started. And you don't know how these people get to where they get to so quickly or whether it's good or bad. Because it could be good reasons and it could be bad reasons. It could be bad reasons. Yeah. So, like, judging yourself based on somebody else's success is never going to help you yeah. at all. Because you're going to be disappointed. Because there, there, if you try to compare yourself, there's going to clearly be a disadvantage, like you said. You know, a lot of these people, and I'm glad you brought it up, a lot of these people that are taking it seriously probably pre-prepped before even stepping into the scene. Like they probably were editors for other people's channels for a long time. They probably paid a thousand of dollars into a mentorship program where that mentor actually prepped them and told them, hey, this is what you need to do before you even launch a channel. And, and they probably dedicated time into researching their market and their niche to even see if it was worth it or not before stepping in. They probably have a team, you know, willpower. Oh, when you have a team that can actually you can delegate roles and people can help each other out to make the production really good you know and 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 pump out those videos like they need to you use as a solo content creator cannot compare yourself then 
to them because period they have an advantage that you don't have and if they have skills like you said photography uh you know videography they they filmmakers they they marketing whatever it may be that's already things that are going to help them push even quicker to their like milestones and end goals you know compared to you that you're probably self taught or you don't even know what the bloody hell you're doing no i i'm sh- you know right i'm exactly. the perfect example of that when yeah. i stepped onto the scene i didn't know anything i didn't know anything about youtube about editing thumbnails all I knew is I knew how to make music and I wanted to put a video to it so people could, could hear the music. All I knew is how to make music. And over time, I've learned how to edit. I've learned how to make thumbnails. I learned how to do promo and, and you know, and, and even getting help from my wife because, like, I couldn't, like, some of the stuff that I'm putting out now, I couldn't do it by myself. So, like, even having her on my side is, you know, being helpful. And you don't understand, like, what it really takes to really get into it. I always tell people like when you get started, you just you have to start somewhere and you have to learn skills as you go along. But if you just if you wait till you think you got everything together till you have all the money to buy all the fanciest equipment and get the best software and you you're never really going to you're never going to come into this game with everything that you need. Mm-hmm. There's always going to be you're always going to be lacking in some area because oh, yeah. There's more to it than just sitting in front of the camera and looking pretty. Like there's, you have to, you know, editing, you have to know promo, what types of videos are going to do good, uh, what type of titles do good, what type of thumbnails do good. Like you have to be able to, and then uh, when trends change, are you able to change with those trends? Do you want to change with those trends? Do you want to just be what everybody else is being and get that quick, easy success? Or do you want to have your own thing and be unique, but your growth might be, you know, slower and take more time because, you know, you're not following what's popular and what the trends are. Are you going to be a shorts person or are you want to you want to do long form videos? Mm-hmm. Like, are oh, you going to sh- be a live streamer or, are you gonna or, be a, or a blogger? Yeah, you know? like you, you have to really find what works for you and what you want to do and comparing yourself to everybody else you're always going to make mistakes because those people gear their stuff towards what they wanted to do and that's why they are in the lane that they are in and you may not necessarily want to put in that amount of work or you may not want to do that kind of content it may not fit you as a person or you might not want to have to give up certain things or try different things because some of these people start off doing one thing and then 360 and do something completely different before they pop off like some people may start off as gaming but then they'll be like oh no but i'm really good at movies and tv stuff or no i'm really good at anime stuff or i'm really good at cartoon like people who usually have those like those quick rises or they get those quick it's because they are willing to change and pivot towards what the algorithm pushes and you have to decide if if that's what you want to do then that's perfectly fine that's okay with you but then are or some people may be like you know what i'd rather just stick to what i'm doing and have a slow steady growth and just build my own community and build my own team so there's a lot that goes into it and so much that goes on behind the scenes that yeah. a lot of people don't understand or even realize. And it can be as simple, you know, and even though we're talking about content creators, it can be as simple as that they started with a channel and then they just prefer to work more in the background. And, you know, they just ended up becoming a- an editor for other people's channels or yeah. a, a social media uh, manager, you know, or, or a person who builds like, you know, websites for you might end up pivoting in something that's completely off of just content creation so you just you just never know and on a personal level i was i was meaning to ask this since we brought it up earlier you know based on our own experience like you know throughout the years as we grew and i i brought this up recently in a post I made on Twitter and it's always interesting to see people's takes on it Mm because depending you know the lens you have on you you'll you'll define that for yourself so like in this past year and I'll break it in a three-parter this is how complicated I am yeah you're welcome one what is the most memorable moment you can take with you that that you've learned right Two, what is something you're actually looking forward to and improving or you're just wanting to do? You're just wanting to accomplish. And three, 
what is success to you? How would you define success for yourself? All right, so what's the first one again? Okay, so the first one is, what is the most memorable moment, experience, or thing you, you, you can... You can take with you that you'd be like, yeah, this is this is the best thing I I could have learned or I experienced, whatever it may be. Okay, so I'm gonna go with an experience. Okay. Uh, one of the best experiences I have is from this year, and I've gotten it from a lot of different people, is people who reach out to me to tell me that my music has touched them in some kind of way. Cause like uh, a couple months ago, somebody had reached out to me about a song I did a long time ago called Alone in the Dark where it's a, a song where I'm talking about dealing with depression and you know getting how I dealt with my own personal battle with depression and getting through it. And a lot of people reached out to me about that song, about it really touched them. And it's, it's a lot of people's favorite song. They're like, they really feel like that song really touched them in a deep kind of way. And it, they felt more open to talk about it because I was so open to talk about it. And, just knowing that the things that I've brought out has affected people's lives and people like really like have been touched by something that I created, mm -hmm. that right there is probably one of the best experiences ever to have somebody like re in public just like, hey, I, I've listened to your music and I really, I really enjoy what you're doing. Like those, and that actually kind of le leans into my number three, what, what does success mean to me? And that is what success means to me, to know that I've made a difference in somebody's lives, that I've touched people, that I've, I've elevated people, that people enjoy what I do and it's brought some kind of happiness and joy to their life. I've had people, you know, I listen to your music when I'm studying. It just helps me. I just put it in the background and I can just study. And, and I like just knowing that people listen to me in their own personal and private times is what I consider success. Like it doesn't matter if there's millions of them or hundreds of thousands, it doesn't matter how many it is. The fact that somebody is affected by my music and that it's touched somebody's life, that is what success is to me. And what was the second question? Well, what do, what, what do you want to either learn or improve or accomplish? What I want to, I, I just want to further improve, just like, it's pretty much what I've always done. Like I want to become a better musician. I want to become a better producer, a better mixer, a better just taking all the skills that I have and pushing them to the next level. But if I had to specifically, which is actually kind of funny because next year is kind of going to do that is I want to become a better leader and a better like manager for my other artists that I work with. Mm -hmm. Like I want to I want them to get their time to shine now cuz for the most part up to this point Master Soul Music is pretty much solely focused on me. Mm -hmm. And I want to get to a point now where people would like really understand that Master Sword Music is not my name. It's, it's more... <laughs> it's a, a, label. a label. I consider it a record label. Master yeah. Sword Music is, I consider more of a record label. And I'm just kind of the leader of that. So next year, I have, you know, all of my artists are going to be putting out their individual projects that are more focused around them. And um, that's something that I want to accomplish is to let people see that this is more than just me. This is a, a, a family and a group that I've built around me that helped make this thing possible. And that's what I'm really looking forward to next year. Awesome. So for me, um, the most like memorable moment or experience I can take from everything I've lived so far has been as simple as being able to reconnect with people who at the moment I wasn't able to reconnect with you know that can be as simple as like family friends colleagues you name it just being able to reconnect with them reconnect with going to places that I used to enjoy going to before and stuff like that which I don't know if that's kind of similar to what you've talked about this past year too kind of. yeah excuse me because <laughs> always in one episode, I'm always coughing. Yeah, got to. Um, one thing I I actually want to accomplish, and I keep thinking about this over and over again, is I want to continue pursuing my own like self discovery journey and pursuing my own happiness. Like I really want to continue living my real life outside of 
you know, social media outside of what I do, outside of this online world, because I feel like we get so carried away sometimes by what's happening in this sure. world that we forget to live life. So I want to be, in other words, I want to be more present for the people who need me. So like my family, but also most importantly for myself, I want to be more present for myself, um, which as simple as it may sound you know or it may seem I'm, I think one of those ways that I'm starting to do it is by tapping into like previous hobbies I used to enjoy or doing some other things that don't necessarily involve gaming um and then success for me I simply define it now like at the beginning it was all about you know uh, at first, oh, I want to become a YouTube partner. Oh, I want to become monetized. Oh, I want to collab with this person. You know, I want to do this. I want to do that. Now, for me, it's coming to the point that, you know, somebody who's looking on the outside probably will say, well, that's easy for you. You like you obviously have done everything. So, like, obviously, it's easier for you to change your success. But, no, it's more so I've reset. <laughs> it's like I like to say always. And success for me, I define it more of, am I happy doing what I'm doing? And if I am happy, then that for me is success. Facts. Because if I'm happy, then people are going to see it. And, and it's just easier to consume something from someone who actually is happy than from somebody who's just trying to force themselves to be happy. And I'm actually really glad you said that because a lot of people get that twisted and get it backwards. A lot of people think that if I get that success, if I, you know, become a partner and become monetized, then that'll make me happy. But I think people actually have that backwards and you're not going to reach that level of success until you are happy. Oh, yeah. You have to be happy and confident with who you are and what you're doing before an audience will pick up on that. You know what I'm saying? So like, once you have that genuine happiness and you're fulfilled in your everyday normal life, you can bring that energy to what you're doing, which would help you get that success. And I think a lot of people get that twisted because what I got going on in my real life is what motivates me to write the things that I write. You know what I'm saying? The fact that, you know, all about you is written about you know my real life it's not about my digital life or gaming or necessarily i use gaming references to talk about those things but at the end of the day it's my real world experience that creates the music Mm -hmm. it's not the other way around so it's like if i'm not living my life in the real world i won't have anything to really write about so like every every level you can see me evolve you can see where i'm talking about this at this point in my life I'm dealing with depression at this point in life or now I'm talking about you know finding the love of my life and getting married and talking about that and then you know of course you know next I'll probably be talking about being a dad you know (laughs) yeah so it's like it's the real it's my real life and the happiness and purity in my real life that creates the music which then creates the content so it's like I think people want the content to create their happiness and that's a really backwards way to look at things well said well said and i think that's where i'm at right now that i'm looking forward to continue pursuing my happiness and if that happiness involves you know making changes making drastic changes cutting off stuff that don't add to my happiness anymore or you know continuing something that does make me happy then that's pretty much where i'm at in my journey right now where i'm i'm just self-analyzing and this goes to another conversation which i'm not going to cover here by the way but it was something that we talked about about even like the relationships we try to make with other people and you know friendships that we try to tap into that's another episode yeah that's which we're gonna leave for a whole other episode because we have to transition to reset right now yeah we've been going on the intro that was a long (laughs) intro and i'm gonna actually pass the mic to you so you can start this off because this actually was an idea of yours oh yes 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 so this actually came up when i was watching a uh, interview with uh two uh online journalists who were like they were just they were just having a standard interview but during this interview they started talking about how like 
when they first began what they were doing, like being online journalists, how at first it was like, kind of looked that weird and funny. Like people was like, well, you're, what are you, you're a journalist? Oh, I'm an online journalist. And how people kind of looked down on them, but to the point where they are now, these particular two, I'm not going to name any names, but these particular two online journalists are some of the biggest in the industry right now who have millions of subscribers, who have their own businesses that surround it, who have their own offices, who have their own employees, people that they, you know, pay now, they have their whole team built around it. And now the pe- the same people that looked down on them or gave them a hard time about what they were doing want to be a part of what they're doing now. And that's where I I had a moment where it clicked in my head where I, I realized that when content creation and, and influencing and, and social media advocates and all this online stuff was first coming into fruition, a lot of people looked at it weird. Like, oh, you just talking to strangers online and you're doing all this weird stuff and all this gaming, you nerds and all that mm-hmm. kind of stuff. It's not a real job. Or- yeah. To the point where today that thing has done a complete 360 and now everybody that was saying those things now want, want to be a, to part, be a part, of part of it. So it's like, I think it's very interesting how the world has really turned on its head now because now it's like those internet influencers and those social media people and the, the content creators and the streamers are now what everybody wants to be. Oh yeah. To a point where at first everybody made fun of them. It's become mainstream. Yeah, it really has. And I, I think it's really, really interesting. Like think about all your like your favorite celebrities and your, your favorite musicians and how they are now coming to these online platforms to try to, you know, oh, I wanna do a YouTube channel with this and this and that, or I wanna start a podcast, or I wanna like you you're noticing that a lot of these big names and celebrities and, and musicians and artists and, and actors and they're all doing podcasts and, 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 and online streaming all this stuff now where at first it was looked upon as oh that's not a real job or you can't make no money doing that you're just a wannabe yeah yeah. and now like those tables have completely turned now and i think that was a very interesting thing that they pointed out because they were they kind of laughed about it when they were doing it they were just like yeah like oh yeah i got bigger numbers you know say like they were they were kind of being a little arrogant about it but at the same time they kind of had a point they dropped that that bomb that, that just uh, the of truth yeah they yeah. dropped that just that like oh at first y'all made fun of us now y'all want to be us mm-hmm. kind of thing and i was like you know what they kind of got a point and I, I thought that was just very 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 interesting and i wanted to hear what your thoughts are on that yeah it's, it's really interesting when you brought it up because it I, I had to like go back in time and kind of uh like piggyback of how I felt when I first started YouTube Mm -hmm. because the weird thing is like even though I became infatuated with YouTube and I and I made YouTube you know my main platform for what I do I I never really considered myself a YouTuber I don't really like the term of YouTuber because I don't really see myself as a YouTuber Mm -hmm. so you know at the beginning for me this was very secretive this is almost like i'm running some sort of secret operation of god forbid my family finds out or my friends find out that i'm making youtubes and, and videos and just putting it you know out there for a bunch of strangers to watch that i don't even know you know who they are and you know when when you had to have these conversations with people and people would ask you oh what do you do at the beginning for me it was very hard to explain because it's so it was so new like how do you explain to someone i make youtube videos like it may sound easy now but back in the day it wasn't it wasn't a thing so i would be like oh i just you know i i, I do videography you know I, I i do a little bit of filmmaking and you know how to use different other terms that people knew more what they Understood were what yeah, understood what they meant than trying to introduce a whole term and then having to break down a whole uh, thesis of, yes, this is what a YouTuber does and this is the videos and schedule. Because honestly, I didn't know what the hell I even was doing and during that time. So I was just learning just like everybody else who was brand new mm-hmm. to the platform. Nowadays, it's so much easier. Like I don't even have to say it because somebody will come up to me like, oh yeah, you know what? I love your channel. You do. YouTube, you do YouTube videos, 
stuff like that. It is so weird because I'm now at this at, at a phase in my life that I don't have to explain it because people know what it is. They'll be like, oh yeah, I started a YouTube channel because of you. Like what in the world, I was, you know what I mean? I'm like, oh, you inspired me and I'm now doing my own thing. And it's just so, so weird. Yeah, to right the point now. now where people even ask you to do public engagements based on your channel. Which I never like, thought I was gonna do. I think that that was what really blew my mind when I was thinking about this topic. I was like, like somebody literally reached out to you from a college, it was a professor. Yeah, professor. Reached out to you from a university. It was like, I seen your content and your content is like kind of fits with this this thing that we're doing. And we would like to have you come and speak at our university to our students about, you know, what you yeah. talked about in your video. And I'm just like, wow. It's it's crazy where like, we that's are. A, that's a thing now. Yeah, like, and, and, and this is me on a, on a smaller, you know, field because I do consider myself, you know, a, a small content creator. But, you know, other people that are probably like bigger than me, you know, have been able to go mainstream on TV, like oh, late yeah. night shows. They perfect been... example is uh, when my boy uh, that does the Hot Wing Challenge. Oh, they have their own game show now. They got their own brand of hot sauces now. They they got television shows commercials like they on tv and all that yeah. kind of stuff they get big name people to come through like my boy ed boom was on it not too long ago like they really turned their youtube channel into something like more than just youtube yeah like now like i said they have their they have their game show they got their own brand now you can go out and hot ones that's what it is i was trying to think of the name yeah you can you got you can go out and buy hot one products in the store you can go watch the Hot Ones challenge on TV, on their game show. And it's like they've turned it into something like that become way bigger than what it originally was. And, and, and let me just remind you guys, TV, like main traditional TV, right? Traditional media was against the whole thing of, of internet. Yeah. And then slowly but surely you started seeing them jumping on YouTube, jumping on on Twitch to live stream, uh, inviting online figures to their shows. And now you're starting to see, you know, and this has been an exchange on both sides. Like you're starting to see online uh, celebrities or public figures, however you want to call it, you know, making ads, commercials, you know, being in movies and being in special events, you know, like a WrestleMania and stuff like that, like a boxing and all big, big sport names and stuff, you know, and they're just involved in it. Um, and then the same thing with traditional media. You're starting to see like wrestlers have uh, their own like live stream channels. The uh, sport players, the same thing. I'm, I'm really bad with names, but there's this one basketball player. I forgot his name. LeBron. LeBron. LeBron uh, James. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I saw a, a clip where he was doing a, a charity. Oh, it's yeah. a charity event, and he's live streaming and. I was actually appreciating someone, you know, for, for, for their donation. Oh, yeah, he actually does a lot of stuff like that. He's really good. And, uh, you know, uh, The Rock. And I, I can go on with how many people now have, uh, you know, podcasts, YouTube channels, you name it. So it's been an exchange on both ends. Yep. And I, I think the big reason for that is because traditional media, I think this is what this all boils down to is that traditional media is no longer like the top dog like how many people i would I, I would actually like to see this and i'm very interested so please put your comments maybe we'll do a poll or something oh yeah for sure but i would like to know how many people out there actually have cable television yeah the consume yeah who, who actually TV? watches cable television anymore or are you a Netflix, YouTube, Disney Hulu, Plus. Disney Plus person? Yeah. Like, cause I know for us, like we haven't had cable ever. I last time I had cable, I was probably in my 14, 15s, yeah. teenage. Yeah, but like since we've been together, we've not yeah. had cable at all. Mm -mm. We always watch YouTube, or we put on some anime stuff, or we'll Funimation, and or some sort of streaming service. Yeah, but we, we don't have cable. Yeah. We don't listen to like like radio. Like yeah. who like who still listens to the radio? 
I mean, I would love to see how many people actually still listen to music that way. Or instead, you you know, you download Spotify or you have an Apple Music thing where you can just listen to all the music you want to. Like, how many people are like, you know, even movie theaters have was having a, long, a big problem for a long time to the point where they had to start making exclusives. <laughs> you know, so, oh, yeah. Oh, this is exclusively in theaters. You can only see this in theaters. Oh, yeah. <laughs> because they weren't, people weren't going to the theaters anymore, especially when COVID hit. Like a lot of these movies were just going straight to streaming platforms and just a lot of these TV shows are not even on traditional TV. You got like Amazon got its own little TV series and Netflix got its own TV series and own original programming and Apple's doing their own Apple TV thing. And like traditional media is getting to a point where it's not the main source of people's entertainment these days. And that most people are getting entertainment from the internet side of things, yeah. from your YouTubes and your Netflixes and your Hulus. And a lot of these big mainstream companies are now trying to buy, like you said, Disney is trying to buy into that. Now. Oh, we're mm-hmm. going to make our own thing. And all these other, you know, we're trying to get into this and we're, we're going to do this. And so I think that is a big reason why this shift is starting to happen because people are starting to realize that traditional media doesn't really have the same influence it used to have television uh radio uh i can't even think of the of <laughs> most traditional cds yeah vhs you know i mean movies yeah. movies have changed music has changed tv has changed like overall entertainment has shifted to more of a because it's more accessible it's easier for people to you know say like when you're when you want to listen to music, I go to my Spotify and I can just listen to any artist at any time, at any moment I want to. Mm-hmm. I don't have to, you know, how we used to do, listen to the radio or put it in the cassette and when our favorite song come on, hit record. Mm-hmm. Like, All right, I got it, I got it, I got yeah. it. Boom, mm-hmm. I got it. Yeah. Nice little mixtape. Yeah. Like, we don't, you don't have to actually go out and buy a CD mm-hmm. anymore. You know what I'm saying? You can just, oh, boom, there it is right there. Yeah. Same thing with television. There's a certain show you want to watch, boom, I just download it right there. I want to see a certain period. I want to watch a certain kind of content. And then like YouTube really like, this is the one thing I think real YouTube really capitalized on is that YouTube has become like a television network. Pretty much. Like because, but it's like a, it's like an all you can eat buffet kind of network. Yeah. Where you can have exactly what you want, how much of it you want at any given moment. Mm-hmm. Like if you want to watch nothing but gaming content, Boy, are you in luck. Because we got gaming content for years. Yeah. You want to watch... What was the thing with the little... You want to watch somebody make baby food? <laughs> miniature cooking. Miniature cooking, whatever. You want to see people do that? Get, we got thousands of videos. We got millions of videos that do you that. You want to watch ASMR? Guess what? We got it. We got it. You want to watch a podcast? We got it. Especially right here at the Reset yeah. Zap. <laughs> like, see what I did there? Yeah. But like, tra- like you know, <laughs> all jokes aside... Traditional media isn't what's taking. It, it used to have a, a, a monopoly in the game. Like, if you wanted to hear, you wanted to see a music video from your favorite artist, you would have to go to BET or MTV. If you wanted to watch a certain movie, you would have to go to the theater. If you wanted to hear a certain album, you would have to go out to the store and buy that album. Like, those forms of media no longer have the kind of power and control that they used to have. And, I think people are starting to realize it, so that shift is starting to be like, okay, we're in a digital world now. Yeah, and I, I'm um, I'm glad that we're covering this aspect because, like we mentioned, now it's it's visualized as a a career. Like you can actually pursue this as a professional career, and as a, another mainstream of income. You know, as as your official business. And some people have treated it as a business. And if you're serious about it, then as any business, there are factors you have to consider. Like a lot of these channels have teams. They have to have a payroll manager. They have to have, you know, uh, the the make sure they, they have benefits, like a package of benefits for each one of their, their employees. You know, they have to do taxes like everyone else, but from a business standpoint, they have to make sure that that a lot of these places where they film depending where they film they got to get a you know a permit to even be allowed to film at this place and he, they have to have a legal team to make sure that they they cover their ends for if anything arises you know copyrights whatever and these you can become think of. real businesses like these are yeah. no, it's no longer some weird fad 
or a trend thing anymore. These are actual businesses. Now. Yeah, they have like, to register like a regular like LLC. Yeah, like some. And, but the cool thing about us is, is that you can build a business out of nothing. Yeah. We're in a world now where if you try hard enough and you work hard enough and you're willing to learn all these things and grow and develop, you can literally build a business out of nothing. And it's and in and even let's say you don't build a business, this still is good even as like your own portfolio. You know, I've seen many like uh, young filmmakers that graduated from college and they put their work out there for the world to see, and and that's like a like a resume. So if they yeah, go and apply, like yeah, this is this is my work. This is what I've been working on. Yeah, a perfect example of that. Somebody who's really a lot of people, uh, a, a, a group of people who've really capitalized on this are comedians. Oh, yeah. A lot of comedians have like done their their own specials where they just record themselves doing their stand up for an hour and they put their stand up specials on YouTube and now they've grown to the point where now they're getting hit up by Netflix and all these big networks to do their you know do specials on their you know platforms and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Comedians have really done a really good job of this. Another group that I can say I've benefited from it has been. Uh, musicians oh for sure for, and i think honestly i would say music was probably one of the first ones to really do it because mm-hmm. we can go back as far as my and even though a lot of people make fun of him now but the real the guy that i would would say is the one that really started that trend of making music on youtube and like really like taking turning that into a career is soldier boy oh yeah soldier boy was one of the first big artists to come off of youtube and really turn it into an empire. Another one, if I'm not mistaken, is also uh, Justin, Justin Bieber. Oh yeah, he, he was actually, one. He started it online mm-hmm. and took off. Yeah, so, but yeah. So- Soldier Boy was he he was uh, Soldier Boy. You he did a did a video. He put it up on YouTube. Didn't have no record label. Was an independent. Nothing. He just put it out there. Next thing you know, it millions of records sold. And you can be like popular in anything because like I know a girl that uh, I, when I started watching her, she barely had subscribers and it was a cooking channel, which I'm not going to say her name now. And now she's blown up to a magnitude where she has her own cooking book. She has uh, shows and now she's gone to traditional TV and they have like her own like cooking programs and segments and stuff. And now she's jumped into music. Now she's actually even singing and releasing albums and stuff like she is branched out in a way that it's it, you know if, if it wasn't for what how she had started in the beginning i don't know if she ever would have made it honestly yeah. and we're in a day now where like everybody has access to it now so it's like everybody has a chance everybody has an opportunity it's just how willing how hard are you willing to work for it and what are you willing to do to get there and how far do you want it to go but i think it's just really interesting how things have because it, i think it even relates to the gaming field as well because Mm -hmm. remember when you know when gaming was like gaming's always been a thing but like for a long time like to be an adult into gaming was kind of looked at as oh you're a grown man why you would you still playing games for you're Mm -hmm. a grown woman why you still playing video games and this is so weird and awkward and you just you're just a nerd and whatever blah 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 Mm -hmm. blah to a point now where gaming has become mainstream mainstream gaming movies and and tele most of some of the best television shows are now gaming based like last of us and one piece and like you know what i'm saying like all that anime gaming nerd stuff that people made fun of is now becoming like the mainstream and it's becoming like what's popping and what's popular and what everybody wants to be a part of now and this is i think that parallel between traditional media and you know, online media is the same thing that's kind of happened with with gaming. It's like, oh, first it was just this uh, something that kids do and, and kids and, and nerds do mm-hmm. and old people that ain't got nothing better to do with their lives. To now, it's like more accepted that oh, I'm a gamer. I play video games. Now everybody, now everybody's a gamer. Now. Yeah, and apparently everybody's a gamer. everybody's a gamer now. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you game? I game too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Game too. <laughs> what game do you play? I don't know. I'm a gamer. I'm a gamer. <laughs> And I just think it's real interesting that 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 has happened in this world because, like I said, it wasn't it didn't used to be that way. But now it's just like I can I can, you know, be loud and proud to be a gamer and nobody it's not really like seen as a negative thing anymore as much as it was once upon a time. Yeah. 
I guess the the only negative thing I can say out of all of this, like I don't want to like end it on a bad note, but it's just something I've I've noticed is that now that it's mainstream, now every, because it seems like oh it's the popular thing, it's the it's the trendy thing, it's the cool thing to do, which this goes back to our high school playground thing. Yeah you know yeah now we're the cool kids so now it seems yeah now we're the cool cats you know so now it seems like everybody now wants to become a youtuber or everybody now wants to become an influencer or everybody now wants to become an instagram model and so and so and so you know because it's the popular thing it's what's popping but it's not necessarily because they want to pursue it as a serious career or as a business it's just this is what's trending this is what's going on so i have to be a youtuber in order to be someone in this space yeah. but uh the one thing i will say about that is that all those people who are doing it for the wrong reasons will fall by the wayside yeah it's a lot of work yeah if you ain't serious about it you're gonna quit yeah oh yeah automatically like I've, I've said it so many times but you don't know how many people i've seen that have started that seem like they were going somewhere with it and then a year later they're nowhere to be found like i don't i don't even know what, where they are at right now yeah, it, it happens in every genre it happens in every field like it happened with music at one point everybody was a rapper still kind of happened <laughs> Everybody wants to be a rapper. Everybody's a rapper now. Everybody's a rapper. I'm trying to rap. I'm a rapper. You're a rapper. Hey, mom's a mom's rapper. Mom's a, mom's a mic and yeah. and mom. little little this, little that. that little this. Little this, little that. Everybody's little something. Chant this. I'm changing my name to little, little TJ. Shake that. Shake this. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's a rapper. You know? And of course, only the only the people that are really serious about it ever really make it to the top. Yeah. Like everybody at one point every before that, everybody wanted to be an actor. Everybody thought they was uh, Everybody actor. wanted to be a uh, Johnny Depp. Yeah. Everybody <laughs> wanted to be Johnny Depp. Everybody wanted to be Angelina Jolie. <laughs> just so much, so bad. You know what I'm everybody wanted to be Tomb Raider. You know. What I'm everybody wanted to be Tomb Raider. I'm Angelina Jolie, Tomb Raider. I want to be that. <laughs> everybody wanted to be a uh, what's wrong with home girl? Uh, uh, Holly Berry. Oh God, yeah. Everybody know. Everybody was cutting their hair off, and I'm gonna be Holly Berry. <laughs> I want to be Denzel. Oh, Can God. I be Denzel and Will Smith or something? <laughs> Jesus Christ. So, <laughs> I just thought it was an interesting topic and I thought I'd bring it up. And I want to see what you guys think about that as well. Like, what do you guys think about the modern age of traditional media over online media? Like, how do you see things going and evolving from here? Actually, it'd be interesting to even see how, but what's people's uh, perception about people who actually do this like how do you visualize those people is it actually something you accept or you still think it's kind of like a fad you know yeah I, some people still feel that way but i feel like the number is just slowly dwindling away where only the small minority of people really still have those same sentiments and so those people are normally people who just don't understand or don't get it or don't realize how much money can be made doing it now like oh, yeah. some people have gone from being broke to millionaires doing what we're doing so it's like oh. Yeah. They were willing to put in that work, and they put in the time, and they became what they became. Yeah. And there's no denying it. At this point, if you're against it, it's because you just don't get it. And you, it can no longer be denied that this is a real thing. Yeah. And thanks to that, we've been able to pursue our, our own dreams. Yeah. Our own projects. That's right. I've been able to put out music to the world. And my music is listened to worldwide. I'm just some guy, but my music is listened to worldwide, and you know, not the two million. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hit half a million streams. Okay, you know okay. Saying? Half a million streams worldwide. So like, even somebody like me could start a whole music career just off of what I built myself, and yeah. I can build that fan base and continue to grow and continue to do things however long I choose to do it, or however far I want it to go. That's all. It's, my career path is in my total control at this point. I don't have to rely on a, on a company to sign me or a record label to give me a deal when I can I can literally do it all myself now and I can 
own all my own publishing, own all my own music. I don't have to have anybody try to cheat me out of my, my masters or anything like that. I can create what I want to for myself. And I think that's an opportunity that has never existed in America like it is now. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, that's such a nice way to tie it. Like, I think now we're living in an era where, you know, back in the day, and I hate to put it this way, but it is what it is. You know, school trains you to be workers, mm -hmm. to be in a work setting. Yeah. And you're not really allowed to think outside the box. Mm -hmm. But, you know, outside of school, and still go to school, don't get me wrong, but outside of school, you know, you can also have the space to pursue your dreams, to think outside the box, to be an entrepreneur, you know, to go after what you're so aspiring to be. And, and now with all the resources and again, accessibility, all the platforms you have, the whole world is pretty much in you, at your reach yeah. to, to be able to do whatever you set your mind to it. Yeah. And I feel like a lot of people look at the negatives of that. They go, oh, well, now everybody's doing it. They're, 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 you have to learn how to take the good and the bad. Yes, with more accessibility, that means more people are going to be trying it. But at the same time, that gives you access that you didn't have before. So yes, there are positives and yes, there are negatives. But in the big picture, I feel like now everybody has a chance if they want it. And just take a chance, like my other episode that you can listen to from the Reset and Zap podcast. Oh, yeah. See how what I did there? I see what you did. <laughs> but anyway, guys, I want to thank you for taking the time of sitting down and listening to this episode. I cannot wait to read each and every one of your comments. But also, if you want to be a part of this community, go check out my website, www.zapcrystal.com. Yeah, for all things Zap Crystal. Uh, including this podcast you can check it out at the website you can find out when we live stream what other projects we got going on um, including some upcoming surprises that are going to be dropping throughout the year which i'm so excited and revealing later on of course oh, yeah. yes sir and if that being said i want to remind you to always reset and zap and zap for, for the, the <laughs> you can say it for the week <laughs> for the <laughs> for the week <laughs> you just trying to barge in there as a matter of fact let's do it again do it <laughs> you can do it <laughs> <laughs> now I'm nervous I can't do it <laughs> and don't forget to reset and zap for the for the week <laughs> see y'all next time man Bye. <laughs>